Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and welcome to today's discussion where we're going to be chatting about the future of King's March. And I am 99% sure that King's March is going to be sticking around and I've got words to back that up and I think I've got actions from Grinding Gear Games to back that up as well. So if you're enjoying the Settlers of Calgary League, I hope this is good news. I hope this is not too premature, but I think we've got good hope and good direction and good indicators that King's March is going to be here to stay. Gold, currency exchanges, and all the quality of life. I think it's all there, and I think we can say 18, 19, 20 days into the league that this is going to stick around. It is going to go core, and it would actually be the most terrifying thing for all of us if it didn't, but we'll chat more about that later on. If you are new to the channel, you can of course like, subscribe, and ding the bell, or if you've been hating and watching my receding hairline for years you can of course give a thumbs up to the video just to make sure that you are notified about future video discussions that are going to be slightly more balding and geriatric than this one the first indicator that we have that king's march is going to stick around at this point in the league is the massive amount of patch notes that we have gotten this week about the 325.1 patch notes preview. As of the time of the recording, the patch is not presently live, but we've got a bunch of notes that include a whole bunch of improvements to the league, and as far back as my memory can go, this is the biggest patch that is coming in terms of quality of life improvements to a league that already has a massive number of quality of life features to it. We have never had this amount of improvements come to a league that is ongoing and then that league not go core. There have been lots of bug fixes. There have been lots of changes. There have been lots of hot fixes. There have been lots of development changes during a league. So here are all of the nuance that I am trying to pack into this statement. We have never had this level of just straight up buffs and improvements to an ongoing league that has not then continued on throughout. We've had nerfs. We've had changes, we've had tweaks, we've had hotfixes, but GGG has never said, "There's these are the things that we're working on to actively improve this league without also accompanying later on down the road that work paying off in the long-term form and a league sticking around. Generally, what GGG does is GGG, if they're going to work on something and save it for a later addition or a later improvement or a later league, they won't bring in a whole bunch of quality of life changes into a league. If a league looks like it's sinking, if a league looks like it's not doing well, if a league looks like it's not going to stick around and go core, GGG generally doesn't throw tons and tons of manpower behind it to try and resurrect a league and somehow make it and force it to go core. Generally, if something is dead on release, it's dead, and we see that throughout the updates that come. Now, there's hot fixes, there's bud fixes, there's all sorts of things to improve the experience of a league that is quote-unquote dead on release. But a league that goes core, those leagues get special attention. This is something that we don't have to exercise a tremendous amount of brain power in order to realize or in order to establish. If you're working on a project and you enjoy that project and it's being received well, it's easy to work on it and continue to iterate on it and improve on it and adapt and even pivot with it. If you're working on a project and it's not being received well and you don't like working on it, well, it's really easy to just roll it up into a ball, throw it in the trash can, and move on to the next project. And I think what we're seeing with King's March is a beautiful league that is both beloved by the player base and that's beloved by the developers. And so it's getting love on both ends. I think there's a good shot for it to go core. In those patch notes, we are getting both nerfs to the hard things like tier 17s and nerfs to all sorts of different difficulty settings that are in there, including the removal of some uh, just straight up rolls that can roll on tier 17s and the tweaking of other things that are going on in tier 17s. And we are seeing a massive amount of buffs to things that otherwise, frankly, would not get buffed. The recombinator, as it came back out, we all know it is not as powerful as it once was, but we now have greater access to it than we ever have had before. And now that you've got access to the Recombinator, and we've got access to absolutely bonkers rare gear with just shipping passive amounts of ships out with bars and ore and receiving back massive rare items that you can then go and play with and craft on and recombine. It's amazing to see power level going up any of you players who are new to Path of Exile, 
You can chat with anybody who's a veteran, myself, with others, etc. When GGG buffs something, when GGG goes back in and says, we want this to be even stronger, it is only done either after a decade of people complaining about something, like the Melee situation, or it happens as a result of Grinding Gear Games having a goal for a particular mechanic, and that mechanic is not reaching that goal. And so GGG goes back in and will reattempt through some buffs to entice players to use a particular mechanic in order to generate whatever outcome GGG had as a goal to begin with. As soon as recombining items was announced as coming back in with Settlers, a lot of people were excited about it. As players have been playing with it, yes, you can still make some awesome things, and yes, there are still some outcomes that can come out as generally exceptional items, but those generally exceptional items are generally the exception to the rule that most of the time stuff comes out and it doesn't come out the way that you want it. So the fact that recombinators are getting buffed the fact that shipping, which is already incredibly rewarding, is getting reworked and buffed with Thaumaturgic Dust. The way how everything is looking from all of the things that players are already using that are already powerful and GGG saying, yes, go do this more. We want you to play this more. That, that is... I don't want to say unprecedented because it has happened throughout the, the life cycle of Path of Exile and Grinding Gear Games as a company. It has happened. But it only happens when those core game mechanics that are released through a league that are ultimately accepted as core game mechanics that are going to continue into the base game into the future. I don't think this amount of effort, this amount of buffs, and this amount of nerfs to Tier 17s are coming without these things having some semblance of permanence, whether that's changes to tier 17s there's been a lot of discussion about that just a lot of players saying get rid of tier 17s a lot of players saying keep tier 17s but change these things we are seeing ggg take on larger game development sort of discussions with tier 17s while they are also buffing a whole bunch of things enticing players to play more and to push their characters farther there are countless number of new players who are playing i personally can attest to this almost every day that I'm getting on and playing with players. There's new players who I'm seeing who are either requesting to join in guild or social chat or just joining on to different discords that I'm a part of who are all players who are coming to Path of Exile and going, I'm new to this game and I want to try it out. This is, this is again, not quite unprecedented, but this is definitely the start of, hopefully, a new peak that we've experienced in the past with Path of Exile, but maybe this is another new peak of Path of Exile that we are entering into for Path of Exile 1 with players and a massive wave of players coming into play and enjoy the game maybe for the second time, maybe for the third time that they're giving it a shot, or maybe it's for the first time. And so we've got this massive combination of both GGG buffing things that players are already using, but maybe not using to the degree that GGG wants. GGG then nerfing things that are hard and they want players to interact with more. And GGG making massive statements in the middle of a league about how things are going to work in the future. Showing, not just telling, but showing us as players that they are involved, they are invested, and they want to move forward with King's March. You do not just have to take my word for it, though. You don't just have to read between the lines of patch notes. You can use Social Blade. You can use any number of metric sites that you want to, to just go and check. Check any of your favorite streamers, any of your favorite content creators. Just check anybody. I see this on my back end here on the YouTube channel or over on Twitch. You can go and look at the Reddit pages that are affiliated with, with uh, Path of Exile. You can go check the forums. You can even go check Facebook gaming and Facebook gaming groups. People are talking about and interacting with Path of Exile things more now than ever before. There is a steady increase in terms of viewership, in terms of subscriptions, in terms of player base. So while I don't have access to the back end of Grinding Gear Games database saying how many hours players are putting in during Settlers of Kalgur versus, let's say, Necropolis or, let's say, Trial of the Ancestors, like we don't have that data. But what we do have is how people are engaging with Path of Exile. We got lots of data that says that. Complaints are way down over on Reddit. Complaints are way down over on the forums. Viewership is way up on YouTube. Viewership is way up on Twitch. Interactions are way up on Facebook. And across the board, anybody who is invested in Path of Exile is getting more out of Path of Exile as they're playing it. So overall, I think it's pretty easy to say whether we're looking at patch notes from the developers or whether we're looking at engagement from players and social activity and people just interacting and talking about the game and then booting up and actually playing the game. I think we're seeing a lot of people really come back and enjoy King's March. I am one of these players who is personally engaging with the league way more than what I have previous 
leagues. So prior to the league launch, I was excited for the league. It looked like it was promising. I think this was probably the league that I was most excited for since maybe Heist's announcement, which was like four or five years ago uh, now, which is pretty crazy to think about. But anyway, in terms of my own personal engagement and excitement, I was very excited about it. Made a video and said, hey, here are the three characters or the three base characters that I want to play. And maybe there's five or six different builds that I want to try out. And I'm already way over that. We're a couple of weeks into the league and I'm way over that. I got four different characters that are started. Two of them are already in the 90s. One of them's almost about to hit 80. And then I got another one that I'm leveling up through the campaign. I am just having a blast and I'm playing uh, and putting my gaming time and my recreation time pretty much all entirely focused into playing Path of Exile. So much to the so much so that I'm actually making less videos than I thought I would this league because I'm just having too much fun playing Path of Exile. So my apologies for those of you that want to see and, and more of my balding forehead and hear more of my geriatric crackling voice. This league is just really fun, and there's lots of reasons for it. One is, of course, the league mechanic. Another, of course, is the quality of life that we've got, improvements that have come just across the board, numbers of quality of life improvements. I, I can't say enough about how awesome it is that you could be on the other side of a door, on the other side of a wall, and there's gold on the other side of it, and you can just get near it, and because of pickup radius quality of life improvements, you, you just collect it. You just, boom, you got it. If something is on the other side of a monster or on the other side of a ledge and your move skill is, your ledge jumping skill is on a cooldown, don't worry about it. You can probably still reach it. You can probably still click on it. The amount of things like that that have come into the game are incredible. And that's not even mentioning yet the currency auction house, which is by far the biggest single improvement in the history of Path of Exile. I think this is bigger than any content improvement. This is bigger than any power level improvement that we players have ever had because, you know, whatever power level we get as players can get taken away from us from the developers later on as they nerf things. The currency auction house, whatever we want to call it, the exchange, Faustus, like that is the single biggest turnaround. By the way, as I'm pointing out all these different characters that I've been playing throughout this league, one of the things that I typically have to do when I'm playing multiple characters in a league that I really enjoy is I'll play kind of one character or one and a half characters at a time. I'll push a character to a point where I'm happy with it, I'm having a great time with it, and then I'll sell off the gear that is off of that character in order to fund other characters. And you don't have to do that this league. You do not have to grind out for a bunch of currency in order to, to then flip one character into another character. You don't have to do that because the currency making methods that are available that are just plain as day in front of anybody. If you're killing monsters, you're going to drop things. And if you're killing monsters that drop things, you're going to have gold. And if you have gold, you can put that into ships. You can put it into mappers. You can put that back into the currency auction exchange and just flip currency all day if you'd prefer, while also going back into maps and killing monsters and getting gold. So there's just so many ways that you can fund characters. I'm no longer having to sell off old characters and old gear in order to fund new characters. You can just have currency that used to be floating currency. It was really theoretical currency. It wasn't currency that was worth anything because you'd have to list it, sell it, try and sell it in bulk and whatever, and, and you'd message a million people and they'd never get back to you. And so you'd, at the end of a play session or at the start of a play session, you'd go through and you'd look at a whole bunch of things and go, okay, what do I need to price this at? And how much currency is this going to turn into? You don't need to do that anymore. You can just use tools like Wealthy Exile, or you can just use tools like the Currency Exchange and just go, what is the current ratio for this junk? I don't want to keep any of this junk. Sell it because I just want to go and play another character. I don't want to stare at a second screen and stare at a trade screen or even invite people to my hideout. I just want to build another character. Take this stuff that I've collected and go turn it into a currency I can use to then go and build my next character. It is amazing and game changing. I say all that partially because I try not to be too hyperbolic as I hype up and get excited for leagues. There have been leagues where we get excited about things, we get hyped up about it, we build up the hype train and the league comes out and it's just a dud. It's not that fun. And so for me, that's no good because for me, that breaks trust between you and me. It makes you say in the future, hey, the bald guy said he was excited for this and it was going to be good. And it's not. It's not good for the whole community as well. I don't do this for a living. For me, this is just a hobby and it's fun uh, to be able to give back and contribute and have conversations about Path of Exile. But for other people, it, it's like it's their living. And so for other people who are playing Path of Exile as their primary game, as their content creation career, like 
that's really, really devastating if they have to come out and say, hey, this is going to be great, and then they have to backtrack it and go, actually, this is terrible. It's not really that fun, and now this is what I've got to play for the next three months or four months because this is my job. That's that's really, really awful. And so I say this without any exaggeration, without any hyperbole. I think right now, where we're at, Settlers of Kalgur, Path of Exile 1, it, it, it has not been better than this, certainly over the last three and a half years. Maybe Delirium and Heist is, is where we would start to get into debates, but I think we are genuinely, if this is the path that we're on, and there's more quality of life to come, I think we're on a path where we're actually just now getting started with a new peak of the Path of Exile 1 experience, and I am stoked for it, and I'm going to play a million characters if that's the case. Part of the reason why so many people are playing, including myself, and playing for as long as they are and building all the characters that they are, is because of the currency auction house. I really do think it's that big of a game changer. Faustus is the GOAT NPC, and I think the number one thing that GGG could possibly do to kill Path of Exile 1, to kill any excitement about whatever league they're announcing next, to kill whatever momentum and goodwill Grinding Gear Games has with the community at large, the number one thing they could try and do if they wanted to kill all of that would be to remove the currency exchange. And so this is why I think the future of King's Mark is so certain. Because in order to get rid of King's March, you would really have to make a massive change with the currency exchange system, with gold, and with what you're doing with all that gold is gold sink. If we don't have a secondary gold sink for what we're going to do as players with all this gold, then you've got to tweak gold drops. you got to make it so that way gold doesn't come into the system quite as much as where it's at right now. Because players, if they have a massive amount of gold and don't have a massive amount of sink, players aren't necessarily using their gold on respecialization nearly to the extent that we're using gold on spending to upgrade and use our various uh, NPC characters in King's March. So that's not really a sync, just saying the specialization. And the currency auction house itself, if it just stood on its own without King's March. I don't think that is the direction that GGG wants to go, where gold essentially is the cap for your interaction with the currency exchange mar market, but then there's really not a cap because you can just dump all of your gold into flipping currency via Faustus. So like, if you just remove King's Mark in some theoretical world, if GGG were just to remove King's March, which is a gold sink, and just to leave the currency auction house, the currency exchange, whatever we want to call it, that doesn't really work in the economy that they've pitched. The, kind of all of these wheels need to be working in order for the gears to grind and for us as players both to be at a spot where we're satisfied and GGG is satisfied at a spot where there's sufficient level of friction for trades, sufficient level of friction for player improvement, and sufficient level of player retention enjoying all of that experience of the friction, the challenge, the excitement, and the new things that we're all getting to experience because our currency is more liquid now. I don't think it's in the plans to remove the currency exchange. If the currency exchange was removed, that would also mean the death of King's March because gold is the primary mechanism that we're using for King's March. I think there is too much investment. There has been too much shown from King's March and from this gold system, from the currency exchange system, and even from the NPC system that is in this town, this colony that we set up in King's March. There is too much at stake giving players what we've got with King's March right here for it not to go core. Now, we've seen massive levels of player power and player quality of life in the past be introduced into the game, and in some way it gets nerfed. Generally speaking, that's relating to player power in-game. It's not relating to quality of life things in-game. Let me give you one quick example and then a counterexample. Quality of life example is that once Alva Incursion came out back during, I believe it was 317, if my memory serves me right, 317, 316, somewhere in there. Uh, when Alva Incursion Temples came out, one of the big development side of things that Grinding Gear Games was working on was making it so that way players could interact with more monsters inside their map, inside their zone, without having to go through a load screen. If I recall correctly, and some of you who are balding and geriatric like me can remember back in the day when Incursion was announced, a lot of emphasis was placed from the development team on we are releasing Incursion and there's no load screen. You're going to go and you're going to interact back in time with all of these other monsters, but you don't have to go through a load screen. And that was a big development quality of life piece for Grinding Gear Games to work on at that point. Now, 
We can talk about whether or not, you know, it's worth it economically to interact with Alva and Alva temples and whether or not you do Alva incursions, etc. But in terms of the quality of life that had been added to the game, Grinding Gear Games was trying to add more monsters into the map to allow for more monsters to come into the map without players having to travel to another instance because that had been a pattern for a while in development. Grinding Gear Games brought a solution to the table. They figured out a way how to reach the goal that they were aiming at and that has remained core and that has actually allowed for an expansion of a number of other mechanics that have been added into the game because of the tech that was developed through the incursion quote unquote no loading screen experience and that's what we're seeing actually right now i think with the currency exchange what we're going to see is developers on grinding gear game side of things actually have the freedom to develop more things because there is a little bit less friction there's not no friction but there's less friction in how players are taking some currency and turning it into others and then how players are actually responding to rares. Have you seen a whole bunch of people on Reddit, on the forums, on YouTube, on Twitch, complaining about how rare drops don't matter much anymore? No. In fact, what players are talking about is how awesome the rares are that are coming back from Kalgur, how awesome the rares are that we're using as we use the Recombinator. But what players are talking about is that rares are actually awesome again, and the way how that has come about is that rares off the ground are no longer what we're actually interacting with as much. What we're doing is we're getting gold. The rares that we would get on the ground are transforming into gold oftentimes, and that gold is then usable into a product that feels a lot better. There's a lot more agency for us as players about what it is that we are getting back, bang for our buck in the trade of picking up the gold, which we don't actually have to click on. Oh, beautiful quality of life. And what we are using that gold on, which is to produce ultimately awesome items for our characters that we are playing more now than ever. The Currency Auction House and King's March, it's one big package right now with gold drops, with Faustus, and with the way how we can use King's March as a gold sink. The biggest thing GGG could do right now to kill any momentum would be to remove all of that. So, while Alva and Incursion is one example of quality of life, I'll use another example about player power. It could be that King's March gets nerfed. Just because this goes core does not mean it's going to go core in its current state. Faustus could get nerfed. The friction and the gold drops and all sorts of different things could get nerfed, could get tweaked, could get, get, get changed in the future, and we don't know what that'll look like. But I don't think it's getting removed. And here's the case study counterexample for that. If those of you who remember Harvest, when Harvest came in, Harvest was absolutely bonkers crazy in terms of its power level and in terms of what it was able to do to allow players who had never played Path of Exile before to self-craft their gear and to progress characters further than they ever had before. Harvest, in terms of gathering in new players and teaching players, even longtime veteran players, how to craft end-game gear or even medium-game gear to progress their character further than maybe they ever had or with ease that they never had before, that entire league and mechanic was a massive success. Now, Harvest came into the league and came in and was just massively overpowered. I believe the, the quote from Chris Wilson at the time was, you need to come and play Harvest over the summer because you are never going to have access to the power level that we are giving you during the league right now. And while that's in some cases true, what isn't true is that Harvest got kicked out of the game. Harvest still went core. It has been through many iterations. It has been nerfed. It is no longer the same power level. But in terms of what it was as a game design principle and opportunity for us to, as players to interact with, to have as an option to interact with as we played Path of Exile, that core gameplay mechanic of Harvest is still there. The power, of it, the power level of it has absolutely changed. The way how we as players are incentivized and want to interact with it has absolutely changed over time. But did the mechanic go core? Yes or no, it did. And so even though the power level got nerfed, and we might see King's March get nerfed in the future, we might see gold change, we might see Faustus's trade mechanisms and ratios somehow capped or changed or something. But what we do know, while all those things may change, what we do know is that Grinding Gear Games has a decade-long track record of finding something that works and then repeatedly iterating on that thing that works. And so King's March, Gold, and the Currency Auction Exchange has worked. And so I think we can say, based off of actions, track record, and words through the patch notes, I think we can say King's March has a bright future, and that means so do all of we. Well, thanks so much for joining us for today's discussion. I hope my enthusiasm and my excitement is transmitting and is coming across to you today. I have not enjoyed a Path of Exile League this much 
since 2020, since Delirium, since Heist, it's been a long time coming that Path of Exile would just absolutely nail a league in the way how it has done right now in this present moment with Settlers of Calgar. But that's just me. I've ranted, I've chatted, I've shared, I've expostulated... Is that even a word? Anyway, I have pontificated on all of the different things that I'm enjoying about the League. I've shown my characters. I've shared with you my just absolute delight with the Currency Auction Exchange, as well as all of the fun NPC little notifications and boss fights that we've gotten through King's March. That's all about what I'm enjoying. But what about you? What are you enjoying about King's March? And what would you miss the most if GGG were to come out with a patch announcement tomorrow and said, hey, you know what? King's March is going forward, but we're not including this. Hey, we're going to, to essentially keep some of the quality of life changes, but we're actually going to remove this one aspect of quality of life. What is it, if it was removed, in your opinion, would be the fastest way for GGG to kill momentum and to kill your excitement about future leagues and future iterations of King's March going core? For me, it would definitely be Faustus and the entire mechanism for us to take currency that for us and for our characters might be useless, to turn it into tradable currency, and then go and acquire the items that we would like. For me, if you take that out, I'm making a video about it tomorrow and just complaining about it for 20 or 30 minutes because it's like why why would you remove that level of quality of life that level of convenience but also that level of player engagement and player interaction of making me want to go kill monsters i want to go kill monsters right now because they drop gold and i need gold to interact with king's march and to interact with faustus it's just been an incredible league so what do you think you would miss the most if GGG said, no, King's March isn't going core, or no, we're changing this one aspect of it? What in particular, if GGG said tomorrow, this is no longer sticking around, we're changing it, we're tweaking it, we're nerfing it, or we're removing it, what would make you grab your torch and pitch for? Well, thanks once again for joining us today. I look forward to reading all of your comments down below and interacting with you down there. But, of course, I hope you're enjoying the Settlers of Calgar League just as much as I am. If you haven't had a mirror yet drop for you, neither have I. Don't feel bad about it. Just keep playing. Every time gold drops, it feels good. And I hope that the ongoing 325 League is the league that a mirror of Calandra and boatloads of gold drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.